today we will be talking about compensation for occupation injury and diseases act this act was designed to ensure that um, the workers they are safe in a working environment it was designed to protect the safety of the workers in a workplace or the other thing in this act also it was designed to ensure that if one construct a disease or an illness because of work related issues one's going to be uh, compensated one is going to be paid if you get those injuries or those illness or those diseases because of work related issues now we are going to talk about the purpose of this act the aim of this act we are going to have uh, four bullets in terms of the purposes the first bullet it provides a comprehensive protection to employees who are injured in the course of performing their duties. For example, one is a driver, you are driving from, you are transporting groceries from maybe Nelspruit to Jamestown. So now if you are involved in an accident, it provides that protection to the employees. Then our second point, Koida applies to all casual and full-time workers who become ill or injured or disabled or who may be killed while they are performing uh, their duties. Oh, I'm feeling sick. Therefore, it means you're going to be compensated. You're going to be paid because you were ill, because you were injured while you were performing your, your duties. It excludes the workers who are guilty of willful misconduct or it excludes the workers who did not uh, follow the instructions. At times, you are given a guide that you are expected to wear a helmet, to wear the protective garments. Then if you as a worker, you decide that you don't want to follow that instruction, therefore you will be excluded. You are not going to be compensated because you did not follow the guide that was given to you. It provides the establishment of compensation board whose function is to advise the Minister of Labour on the application of the provision. In other words, it gives the clear direction to the Minister of Compensation Board on how to deal with the um, cases that are related to a coiner. Therefore, we are going to talk about uh, the positive impact and the negative impact of COIDA. Now, the positive impact, it's it, it either, in, during examination, you'll find a question whereby you'll be expected to uh, explain the effectiveness or the impact. It's the same question. It's the same. So we've got positive effects, we've got negative effects, uh, the other words, we've got a positive impact and negative, it's one thing. The question might say effect, the question might say impact, it means one thing. So now we're going to start about the positive effect. The first point, it promotes safety in a workplace. In other words, uh, the employers, they'll be forced by law to ensure that their workers, they are working in a safe environment. And then our second point, the claiming process may be relatively simple. Why? Because it provides a guys put a, a you as an employer, what is it that you must do? You as an employee, what is it that you must do in case of an accident, in, in case of um, any accident that might, might happen at, at the workplace? Okay. All right, everyone knows what to do. Then our third point, the employees, they don't contribute towards that fund. That is why it's an advantage. Only the employers will contribute, but the employees, they are not expected to contribute towards ECOIDA. Then our fourth point, it eliminates time and cost spent on the lengthy civil courts. It will eliminate, it will make it easier for the employer and the employees not to go to court because they follow the procedures in terms of COIDA. Any compensation to an employee or the family is exempted from tax. Now, if maybe the employee died while they were performing their duties, therefore they are 
family, they'll be compensated. So now that compensation, it will be free from tax. It will be exempted from being taxed. And now the last point, the employees are protected from financial burden should an accident happen. In other words, if one gets injured in a working environment, it won't be the responsibility of the employer to go and pay that individual. They'll go and, and simply claim from quarter because they were paying towards that. Those are the uh, positive impact. Therefore, let us go to the negative impacts or uh, negative effects. Now, we've got uh, five points that we'll be talking about. Our first point, the claiming process can be time consuming. It takes time to claim. That will be our first point. And then our second point, the domestic and military workers are not covered in this order. But I understand that there are other latest changes. I think domestic workers now are covered, but military and domestic, uh, according to our prescribed syllabus, they are not uh, covered. And then our third point, the workers who are temporarily or permanently employed in foreign countries are not protected in terms of COIDA. If you go and work uh, in other countries, therefore you are not going to be covered by COIDA. You're a foreigner. Then our fourth point, the employers may be forced to pay heavy penalties if they are found guilty. If it's a responsibility of the employer, the employer was told that you must put a, a particular gate on that area and the employer did not comply with that, therefore you'll we'll be faced with heavy fines. You'll we'll be expected to pay heavy uh, fines because of the negligence that they've caused. And then our last point, the implementation process procedures required by this act may be very expensive, may be very costly. Therefore, we are going to talk about the discrimination action. How do you discriminate in terms of COIDA? So we are going to have a five facts. Our first point, the employers who bribe or prevent the employee to go and lodge a claim. One was involved in an accident, therefore the employer said, no, you mustn't go and claim, uh, look, I'll, I'll give you this much, I'll give you. If, if the employer does that, therefore it's conducting an non-compliance, conducting a discrimination action. Then the other action, if one is falsifying the information, giving the wrong information in terms of the accident, it doesn't want to give the correct information. You know why? Because of if it's a negligent of the employer, therefore the employer is supposed to pay. So now if the employer would want to pre prevent himself and uh, change the, uh, the terms of his claiming, therefore that employer is conducting a non-compliance. And then the third point, the employers who do not contribute to compensation fund, therefore they conduct a discrimination or non-compliance if they don't contribute. Hey, if she's not paying, I'm not paying. And if you're not paying, I'm not paying. And then the fourth point, the employers who do not allow claims for injuries. They don't want to allow, allow those claims or they discriminate in terms of, well, I'm not going to take your claim, but I'm going to take the claim of that person because that person was early at work, he performed his duties okay, therefore you will be conducting a non-compliance or a discrimination action. Then our last point, the employers that take too long to lodge a claim, therefore that is regarded as a discrimination or as a non-compliance. If you take too long to lodge a claim for someone who was involved in an accident. Therefore, let's go to the penalties now. If one conducted a non-compliance or a discrim conducted discrimination action, now what will be the penalties for they? Now we've got five points as well. Now our first point, the business can be fined for refusing to pay for a particular employee. A fine can be. 
large to towards that business then our second point the business may be faced to pay heavy payments large payment for non-complying and then the third point they may be forced to pay any cost that are required by a compensation fund if the compensation fund is going to find that the employee it was the negligent of the employer therefore maybe how many thousand that's supposed the employer supposed to pay those same fine that are expected by the compensation fund then our fourth point the employees may take a business to court for not registering them i'm suing you hear me suing if your employer did not register the employees, therefore you will be conducting a non-compliance. Therefore, the employees, they've got a right to take you to a court and the court will deal with the commissioner of the compensation fund. Then our last point. Businesses that do not comply with COIDA may receive a compliance order from the labor court, which forces the business to comply with COIDA. Our last part that we'll be talk about, it is the ways in which a business can comply. How do you comply? How do you do right in terms of COIDA? First, the business should provide safe, healthy working environment. That's the responsibility of the employee. I love working here. It's safe in here. Then the second point, the business need to ensure that the working premises the equipment that are used by these employees when they are working, the machinery that they are using when they are doing the production, they are in good condition. It's the responsibility of the employee. Then our third point, the employer is supposed to register with compensation fund. It's the responsibility of the employer to ensure that they register with compensation fund and provide correct information about the business. Then our fourth point is the responsibility of the employer to report all the accident that happened, that occurred in a working environment. They need not to hide a certain information. They need not to, you know, some, sometimes the employer, they want to hide the information. Hide it! <laughs> because they enter into bad records. Every time you, there was an accident, every time there was, a, so you'll be known as an enterprise where ooh, in this business, 17 accident happened in a week. So they don't want to lodge those, they, they don't want to put their business in a bad image. Levies must be paid to compensation. It's a responsibility of the employer to ensure that he pays towards compensation fund. It's a responsibility of the employer to ensure that he keeps records of the employees their incomes and their details, the number of years one worked in a working environment, is the responsibility of the employer to do that. And then our last point. The employer must display a summary of COIDA in the workplace where it is visible to all employees. That is all about Koida. So I appreciate if you subscribe to our videos. Thank you very much.